Hello everyone and welcome to St. Matthew's online worship for the first Sunday after Christmas. We're so glad to have you with us and, and joining us in worship today. I hope you had a blessed and joyful Christmas connecting with friends and family in whatever way uh, you were able to do that. Uh, it is certainly an unusual year and times like this are such a wonderful time to remember that we have folks out there who love us. We have our own communities uh, that, are, that surround us and uplift us and support us. And I hope you are able to find that uh, this Christmas and that you have been richly blessed. I don't have a whole lot to announce to you today. Just a reminder, we are online only today. Of course, if you're here joining us, you are in the right place. Next Sunday, also online only, we resume in-person worship with the old schedule on January 10th, 7.30, 9, and 11 a.m. At the 9 and 11 a.m. services, we will have outdoor seating. Uh, and we plan to continue to offer that as long as is necessary, and we are able to do that, uh, certainly through the month of May. Uh, we, we believe we'll continue to do that based on what we currently know. So things may change in 2021. You never know. We certainly didn't have 2020 that we expected, uh, but that is the current plan right now. So if you want to come to the 9 a.m. service, just I want to warn you, it's January, and it will be a little chilly. Uh, so bring some extra layers, bring some blankets, especially if you plan on sitting outside. 
outside. Um, so we're, we're doing that to try and ensure the safety and health of everyone who attends and worships with us in person. We also are continuing our commitment to these online services. So uh, we have a lot uh, that we're doing right now, a lot that we're trying to offer because we are trying to meet you where you are. If you want to be here in person, we want to make that as readily accessible as we can and as safe as we can. If you want to join us online, we want to make that uh, as wonderful and as rich as we possibly can. And so we're, we're just doing a lot more now than we ever have uh, to put these together. And so, um, you know, we, because we, we really care about you being able to stay connected with us and be part of this community. Um, so I hope that that is something that is helping you, helping you worship, uh, helping uh, work with you as well. Um, special announcement today, we have a guest preacher, someone that you know uh, well. Uh, the Reverend Mike Halley is going to be our guest preacher today, uh, and so he will uh, be giving the homily, and we so we're very thankful to him for giving his time, especially during this busy season, to join in with us. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, all of your support this past year. We really appreciate it. We still have those posters that can go out. If you're interested in making a, a pledge of support for 2021, we have amazing posters to give. And uh, at this point, I would just say thank you for everything that you've done to help us continue our ministry. Let's just take a moment of silence as we collect ourselves in this uh, post-Christmas time of, of peace and quiet and solitude and allow ourselves and our hearts to turn inward and welcome the Holy Spirit as we begin our service today. Thank you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly, sweetly through the night. I 
sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ our Lord, the newborn King. Go. So with you, let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join us at reading Psalm 147. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How, How good, good it is, is to sing praises, praises to our God. God. How, How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. praise. The, the Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares the rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. 
Alleluia. A reading from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's children. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his full fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
Hello and good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's. This beautiful morning, I hope and trust that everyone has been safe and enjoyed your Christmas holiday and found joy in any way that you could to, whether it was Zoom or whether it was on the chance that you were able to be together with some loved ones. I hope that it was a joyous occasion for you. Um, we wait and go through Advent and that day finally comes and it seems to me that it just flies by with all of the preparation, with all of the prayers and lighting of our Advent candles and the preparation of the Christ child and poof, it goes by like lightning. But uh, I hope that you took the time to be able to really enjoy and reflect on the birth of Christ because um, that's what it's all about. I know that this year with COVID has been a really tough year for many of us, both physically and financially. I know that I, for one, I'm looking forward to 2021 and it's coming around very soon. And I'm going to be saying goodbye 2020 and welcome 2021. And I, for one, and I hope you are too, praying for renewal, praying for health, praying that all of those people who get immunized or not, but that the disease can be able to start ebbing down while we ramp up our lives with renewal and hope. Yes, I am, for one, looking very forward to 2021, and I hope that you have a very safe and happy new year. And we will be ringing in um, in a big way and putting aside the, tough, the toughest year ever. I also hope that you had the chance on Monday night to be able to see the Star of Jerusalem. Wow! Can you believe it hasn't been around for 800 years? First time in 800 years on Monday night on the winter solstice, no less, on December 21st. We got to be able to glimpse that bright star, the same star that was at the time of Christ, was the star of Bethlehem that shone so bright uh, when Christ was born in that manger. And we got to be a part and to witness what that light might have looked like on that Christmas night 2,020 years ago. Um, I just think it's amazing. And I hope you were able to take a glimpse of it wherever you might have been. But it's that light that is the main thought, the main metaphor that I want to be able to bring to you this morning in my sermon. From the Gospel, we read that what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. That part of the Gospel really rang true for me as I started preparing the sermon. I know that many of you have had the darkness, maybe in the form of depression, maybe in the form of loneliness, maybe in the form of ill health, but the dark has tried its very best to overcome us. But it is the light, just like in the gospel this morning, it is the light that brings the hope of Christ, that brings the life of Christ. Because Christ, as we read in the gospel, was the light for all of us to be able to conquer the darkness. I don't know that I've prayed as much as I've prayed this year. And I've welcomed the light of Christ into my soul and spirit. And I'm sure that you've had the same experience, that you've done the very same thing. 
because the light of Christ is what permeates and breaks through the darkness. Whenever I was feeling a little down or I went to check on people that were ill in a safe, socially distant manner, in all this isolation, it really was very difficult to be able to provide the love and support that I normally would, but from a distance or from Zoom or from a window, but we may do. And most of you, I'm sure, had the very same experience of seeing your families from a distance or doing a drive-by or whatever it took to help people, families and friends, to remember that the light of Christ is something that you have to bring into your soul and spirit to break the darkness, to take away that depression or loneliness. And then being able to transfer that in our day-to-day -day lives and the way that we work or try to help with people. I know that even in my own office and where I work, uh, putting together claim systems, that so many people were struggling uh, and trying to help them be able to work through their struggles was one of the more difficult managerial things I think I've ever done in my 32 career, 32 year career so far. It is the light of light. It is that light of Christ that kindles in our soul, in our spirit, that lifts us, that lifts us to being able to cope, to find as much happiness as possible. It's that hope of the future that we can be able to once again return to being in our friends and family's homes or even going to the movie theater or even going to a stage play or going to a high school football game. It is that hope of the future that brings us that light. It's that Christ has brought into our own consciousness and our own ability, that understanding that he is with us at all times, that Christ has been able to conquer the light, I mean, has been able to conquer the darkness. And I know that for myself, for my own family, and for my friends, it's been... Um, an uplifting and humbling experience. I've read more books, listened to more music. I've had more prayer time. And those are the things that I find when I bring the light into my, my spirit that I can find a lot of meaning with. And even, I've even been cooking during this strange period of COVID and and being in my home more. Um, I used to be one of those people that traveled all the time and I would only be home maybe five days a month and I would eat out pretty much three meals a day outside of that. And going into restaurants now, mm, no, I don't go inside a restaurant that's crowded or has a lot of people. Instead, I look for the restaurants that have patios. Now, in December, patios with heaters. But this summer, just sitting outside, even though it was hot, was a wise way of being able to wind down and still have that social experience with people in my own bubble, in my own COVID bubble. But that's where we've all been able to adapt and we've all been able to be grateful for what Christ does bring into our lives and knowing that he's walking with us. This year, I have had a number of people that have found different ways of being able to manage and navigate um, 2020. And boy, there's been a lot of walking and hiking and enjoying the outdoors among my friends. I don't do that too much myself. 
I used to be a big avid bird watcher. I even started thinking that maybe I'd pick it up again. But it also brought people closer to their families and had more family time together, um, which has been one of the huge, biggest benefits that I've seen uh, among my communities. And, and I think that that is something that Christ has really been about if you can try to think if there's any reason, if there's any good reason that this pandemic happened, right? Maybe it's brought us to feeling more grateful for what we have. Maybe it's being able to find uh, and rekindle relationships because you've been spending more time at home. I've even found myself writing handwritten letters, even though my handwriting isn't quite so good. But I've even found myself just going and picking up a card or going into my old file and finding an old greeting card that I could be able to send out. And, you know, I know with a lot of my friends' kids say, oh, my God, that's all so old-fashioned. But it's rather nice, and it's a nice way to be able to spend the time thinking of others and writing a letter to convey what maybe took place that day or what might be going on in your mind or thoughts that you might have for that person. Yes, Christ has conquered the darkness and does bring light to us. We just have to be able to open our eyes and hearts and minds to be able to see that light, to receive it. I think that Christ wants us to be able to break our own darkness and be able to bring Christ into our conversations on doing that, or our thoughts. I know that a lot of people ask me, how do I pray? What do I say? And I always tell people that some of the simplest of prayer is just inviting Christ into your conversation. And as you're going through a concern in your mind, supplicate, bring Christ into that conversation, say, Christ, I'm having a time with this or some difficulty with that. And this is giving me anxiety or that's giving me anxiety or a lot of worry. And so I've noticed that as this holiday period started coming, um, when we first started Advent, that there was a lot of tired and weary people from whatever has brought them to that tiredness and weariness. But I've always said to people, have faith, bring hope into your world. Uh, hope is faith of those things unseen. And so that's what Christ's light does, right? It brings us hope. It gives us that light. I used to do a meditation years ago um, where I would see darkness in front of me. I would close my eyes and see that everything around me was dark. And then I would light a candle. And I would start walking forward with that candle. And that would be the light of Christ, that I could only see what that light gave me into my view or perspective. And, and then I, in my meditation, I would come across people or come across places that that light would expose, and I could be able to think about or process or pray for whatever that situation might have come in into light. And I could go on with that meditation for hours of just having that, that candle and walking in that darkness to see what is it that Christ had for me? What was it that... I could be able to see what is it that confronted me. And I could be able to think, okay, I can be able to do this or do that or talk to this person that way or share their concern about whatever. Um, but it's a meditation that I strongly recommend for you in this um, time. And so... Um, the other thing I would suggest, you know, recommend or suggest is being able to use more natural light, right? Light a candle. 
um, find that peace and understanding. Because I guarantee you that when you see Christ in that light, whatever your concern, whatever your sorrow, whatever it is that might be going through to finish out this year, let's leave it behind. Let's leave it in the darkness behind us. And let's use that candle. Take that candle into 2021 to be able to see what wonder, to be able to see what we can hope for, to be able to have that time with family, to be able to take that vacation you had to cancel. But let's hope. Let's bring that light in. Bring that candle in so that you can be able to view what it is in front of you with Christ and knowing that that light is Christ piercing the darkness. I hope again that you have a wonderful uh, New Year's and enjoy your time and be safe. And let's welcome in 2021 and let's pray for peace. Let's pray for hope and thank Christ in the process. Have a wonderful New Year's. Welcome 2021. join me in declaring our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Let us bring before God the needs of the world. Christ, born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. 
Jesus Savior, hear our prayer. Christ, before whom the wise man knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus Savior, hear our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. Jesus, Savior, child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. My friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.